Welcome to Farm Fendi Toy and Pharmacokinetics. Uh, this is the first installment of probably several as we work our way through this the, the dosing of this uh, drug that is very important and also kind of tricky. So hang with me. <clears throat> um, your, the objectives are outlined here. Um, I'm not going to spend much time on indications or products available. Um, because we're going to jump right into the ther the uh, kinetics, um, which are kind of tricky with this drug, as I mentioned before. We'll do a few cases, um, and then we'll do some more cases in class. As you know, phenytoin is used um, for many different types of seizures and also for other neurologic problems, and it's such an effective drug that there are lots of drugs that are coming on the market to try to take its place because it is, you know, like I said, a stinker to dose. So um, it would be nice if we don't have to use it because of the problems that it does present as far as dosing in a safe and effective way. It has a lot of side effects as well. Um, it's available as a phenytoin acid, so there's no salt. It's straight phenytoin. There's no, you don't have to worry about the salt associating and having to adjust for that. Bioavailability of the drug is about 95%, and um, it's available as a chew tab and a suspension. This is usually used for kids. Uh, the phenytoin sodium uh, capsule obviously is a salt form, and so you have to account for that. It's about 92% phenytoin. Um, the, uh, this is available in 100 milligram and 30 milligram capsules, which does present problems with a non-linearly cleared drug, which we'll talk about as we get into the dosing. There's, uh, a, the capsules are used for once daily dosing because they are a extended release formulation. Um, and there is one generic product that can be, um, that can be uh, substituted for the Dilantin, which is kind of the standard um, brand name, and that's the uh, Mylan um, brand of sodium extended release uh, sodium phenytoin. There is also an IV formulation, and it's really tough for it to stay in solution, so um, you cannot dilute it until right before you use it. It comes in an amp um, it, with 50 milligrams per milliliter, and it's usually, um, they come in 100 milligram amps, and there's larger ones too, but usually you use the uh, 100 milligram amps, so there's two milliliters in there. <clears throat> you have to be sure that you do not give this drug faster than 50 milligrams per minute and 25 milligrams per minute if you are in elderly patients or patients with cardiac disease because of the diluent that's used in the uh, formulation can cause um, profound hypotension and therefore cause um, blood pressure to drop and further to be reflex tachycardia which can cause obviously stress on the heart which is uh, could cause big problems as you know. You can only dilute this in normal saline. Um, this time of year, we have, you probably bring out little snow globes, even though it's like 60 out here, which is weird. But um, if you add phenytoin to uh, D5W, you will get a snow globe in your IV bag. Obviously, you don't want uh, that to go into your patient. So you only use normal saline to dilute phenytoin and you make sure that when you're administering it there's a filter needle in there in case there is any crystallization that forms even with the normal saline um, <clears throat> diluent. Phosphenytoin is another um, IV form of phenytoin that is prescribed in phenytoin sodium equivalents. It's not you just figure out how much you're going to give of phenytoin and then 75 milligrams per ml of phosphenytoin equals 50 milligrams of phenytoin or phenytoin sodium equivalents. So um, 2 mls of, of uh, this phosphenytoin um, and 10, uh, 
okay, I'm not sure what I'm saying here. So I'm going to just skip this. You just dose it as a, if you give the 2 ml vial, I'm sorry, the 2 ml vial is equal to 100 milligrams of phenytoin, and the 10 ml vial is equal to 500 milligrams of phenytoin. That is what I meant to say. Um, for this drug, <clears throat> you can't exceed more than 150 milligrams uh, per minute. So 3 mls per minute. So you can give it a little faster, which is important in status epilepticus. All right, I think I already mentioned that the Mylan brand of extended phenytoin sodium is uh, AB rated and can be substituted for phenytoin, although this is maybe controversial with clinicians. <clears throat> so with these products, they come as 130 milligram capsules. Their salt form is 0.92. Bioavailability is 0.95. Therapeutic range we're shooting for for total concentrations is between 10 and 20 milligrams per liter. And uh, you will find out soon that it's about 90% bound. So if we're going to calculate free concentrations, we want the free concentration to be, be between 1 and 2 milligram per liter. Um, so what are we going to see if we get outside the therapeutic range on this drug? Well, these are concentration dependent adverse drug reactions. So there's concentration dependent and there's not con non-concentration dependent. Obviously if they're concentration dependent we can get rid of them by decreasing the concentration or minimize them by decreasing the concentration. If they're not concentration dependent we can't do anything by changing the um, amount of drug we're giving. We're just going to have to change drugs if they're unacceptable. Okay so as far as kinetics is concerned, when we're dosing a drug, we want to be particularly concerned about the concentration-dependent adverse drug reactions. So the biggest one we're going to see are CNS effects, like nystagmus ataxia, decreased mentation. So first thing you usually see is the nystagmus. Uh, even in the therapeutic range, you can see nystagmus at the high end. Um, once you get up in the 30 range, you'll see ataxia, difficulty walking, um, diminished mental capacity when you get higher, and then eventually drowsiness and you can slip into a coma, which that's not good. Um, you can also see gingival hypertrophy. You've probably already talked about this and making sure their dental care is really good, but this is a concentration dependent adverse drug reaction, so you can try to minimize it by keeping the concentration as low as possible. Uh, while maintaining uh, seizure-free, um, being seizure-free for the patient. Uh, you also can get herchism and coarse facial features from too high or high levels of this drug in immunological disturbances. So you see a decrease in IgA. These are not concentration dependent, so they're more like allergic almost reactions, so any hypersensitivities like rashes, SLE, exfoliative dermatitis, which I have seen um, with this drug, erythema multiforme, carbohydrate intolerance, you can see hyperglycemia, again that's not concentration dependent, so you can't really control it by decreasing the dose, folic acid and vitamin D deficiencies, anemias, hepatitis, and teratogenicity. Okay, bioavailability is usually somewhere between 0.85 and 0.95. A big thing with this drug is that food and tube feedings, if, it, if the uh, phenytoin is being given orally in a patient that's being tube fed um, or food in general, can decrease, significantly decrease the absorption of the drug. Um, not too sure about any transporter systems affecting the the. Uh, gut metabolism, but it's probably not a substrate. And uh, it is, FFP is approximately one, so we know that it's a low extraction drug, and you knew this from looking at the bioavailability here. Um, volume of distribution is 0.7 liters per kilogram, so it's right at total body water there. Um, if, you're, if your patient is obese, you would adjust the volume of distribution as stated here by adding a little portion of fat weight. So um, in this case, um, you can see how we adjust the dosing weight here. It's not the same as for aminoglycosides or for creatinine clearance, a um, little bit different. Um, 
It's 90% bound to plasma protein, specifically albumin. Um, there are a lot of drug and disease interactions associated with this protein binding issue. So the first thing we have is bioavailability problems with this drug. Second thing is we have it's highly protein bound and there's a lot of interactions specifically with other antiepileptics, which makes it even more complicated. And as you probably know, we often give many antiepileptics together, especially in difficult to manage patients. So valproic acid has a higher affinity for albumin than does phenytoin. So <clears throat> It may um, displace, valproic acid may displace phenytoin from its binding sites. Other drugs with high affinity for albumin are salicylate, sulfonylureas, and phenylbutazone. Those drugs aren't given as much, but you still may see a displacement if they are. Obviously, if you have hypoalbuminemia or renal impairment, <clears throat> hepatic impairment, you can see a, an increase in the fraction unbound of phenytoin. And since it's highly bound to begin with, you would be concerned about that. So here's, here's a way you can estimate the fraction unbound of phenytoin um, and also how it would change the volume of distribution. So if you have a hypoalbuminemic patient, your volume of distribution is, can be estimated in, in liters per kilogram if you take 2.8 this fudge factor and divide it by the serum albumin. In severe renal impairment, it's just a little bit different. This equation, uh, these, these things you may, I'm not gonna have you memorize them, I would give them to you, but you need to know how to utilize them. This one's one I use all, used all the time in clinical practice, and that is being able to figure out how the protein binding will change in hypoalbumin hypoalbuminemic patients and patients with renal impairment. What this does is takes your concentration that you observed. Remember what's the one thing we know? Well, hopefully one thing that comes to mind when you know about binding, um, what you know about protein binding is with high, highly bound drugs, you can use total concentration to estimate what's happening with free unless there's a binding change. If there's a binding chain, then all bets are off. And what this does is it takes your observed total concentration and using the serum albumin, it adjusts that total concentration to actually reflect what it would be to show you what's going on with free. So it's a fudge factor to actually change the total to reflect really what's happening with the free concentration. Um, so both hypoalbuminemia and renal impairment. So you just take the concentration that it, if you order a total level of phenytoin, you put it into the numerator here, and then you divide that by 0.2 times the serum albumin of the patient plus, plus 0.1, you multiply these first and then add this, okay? Follow your um, rules of, uh, or what's it called again? Your power, or I can't think of what it's called, but you know what I mean. Anyway, um, that will adjust your total concentration to really re reflect with what's going on with the free concentration. I use these all the time, and we will use them in some cases as well. The third tricky thing about phenytoin, so so far we've got bioavailability issues, binding issues, and then the third big thing is that there's nonlinear hepatic clearance. So remember, it's a low extraction drug, so clearance will be determined by enzyme activity and binding. Remember that enzyme activity is determined by Vmax, which is the capacity of the system, over Km plus C. This is Michaelis Menten, right, again? So Vmax, Km plus C. Km is the concentration at which you've reached half of your Vmax. And <clears throat> what you, what I've told you in the past is that this concentration term usually falls out because the concentration is usually much less that we achieve in the therapeutic range is much less than the KM, so it falls out. This is not the case with phenytoin. So as your concentration increases, what happens to your intrinsic clearance? It decreases. So that's shown here. As your concentration increases, usually your intrinsic clearance just stays the same. It is not concentration dependent. However, with phenytoin, as you increase the concentration, the intrinsic clearance starts to fall. So this is crazy and it makes things really hard. Nonlinear enzyme activity in the therapeutic range. So what does this mean for dosing? We'll talk about that in the next installment. See you soon. Bye.